Let's go see Yuri. Oh yeah. Let's see what you have written for today. <clears throat> Yuri stares at the poem with a surprised expression on her face. Do you like it? Finny, this might be one of the be this one might be even better than yesterday's. How did you even pick this pick up on this so quickly? Just yesterday, I was telling you the kind of techniques worth practicing. Maybe that's why. You did a good job explaining them. I really wanted to, to try to give it more imagery. She came across as an airhead just then. Well, this one or Monica. Yuri visibly swallows. Even her hands appear sweaty. I'm not used to this. Used to what? I don't know. Monica. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. She's like the popular girl at school. So that kind of like tracks really, doesn't it? Mwah! It's fine. Take your time. Yuri breathes and collects her thoughts. I know that Yuri likes to think before she speaks, so I offer that patience to her. So the airhead. Yeah, pretty much. But she's like a clever airhead, but yeah. Yeah, just being appreciated like this, I guess. It probably sounds really stupid, but seeing someone motivated by my writing, it just makes me really happy. Are you saying you've never shared your writing before? Yuri nods. Really? I don't believe it. I really only write for myself. And besides, people would just laugh at me. Do you really think that? Again, Yuri nods. Huh. Even your close friends? Yuri doesn't respond to that. I wonder why. Anyway, do you want to share the poem you wrote today? Yeah, I do. If it's with you. Ah. She loves him. She's going to love him. That's really bright. Um, the raccoon. It happened in the dead of night when I was sleeping. Sleeping? Does not say sleeping. Slicing? Slicing. Just make, stop it. Just making up the words. <coughs> Start again. It happened in the dead of night while I was slicing bread for a guilty snack. My attention was caught by the scuttering of a raccoon outside my window. That was, I believe, the first time I noticed my strange tendencies as an unord... What does that say? Unordinary? Oh my God, I'm writing. Human. I gave the raccoon a piece of bread, my subconscious well aware of the consequences. Well aware that a raccoon that is fed will always come back for more. The enticing beauty of my cutting knife was a s symptom. The bread, my hungry curiosity, the raccoon, and urge. Oh my god, I can't read this writing. The moon increments its phase and reflects that much more light off of my cutting knife. The very same light that glistens in the eyes of my raccoon friend. I slice the bread, fresh and soft. The raccoon becomes excited. On perhaps... Or perhaps I'm merely projecting my emotions onto the newly satisfied animal. The raccoon has taken to following me. You could say that we got her quite used to each other. The raccoon becomes hungry more and more frequently, so my bread is always handy. Every time I brandish my cutting knife, the raccoon shows me its excitement. A rush of blood. Classic Pavlovian conditioning. I slice the bread. I feel myself again. All right, love. Um, I was a little bit more daring with this one than yesterday's. I can see that. It's a lot more metaphorical. I don't know if it's my fault, but I be can't begin to imagine what this poem is about. That's right. It's a bit closer to my preferred writing style, using the poem as a canvas to express vivid imagery and conveying emotions through them. Yeah, if I... If I could, oh my god, if I take it at face value, then I can't even figure out what it's supposed to mean. Well, I think it's something different that different people can relate to in their own way. I wanted to express the way it feels for me to indulge in my more unusual hobbies. She's so dumb! <clears throat> it's those sort of things I'm usually forced to keep to myself. So I sometimes enjoy writing about them. Huh, that's funny. 
Didn't Natsuki also write about something something about that? About someone being ridiculed for strange interests? Huh? She she did? Yeah. She was talking about how it doesn't matter what you're into as long as you're not hurting anybody. She she's right. Uh I mean Does she really feel that way? Yeah. Sounds like you two have that in common. That's well that's interesting. To me, she seemed like the kind of person who would make fun of my hobbies. But I suppose that's my fault for judging, isn't it? Uh, please don't tell her I said that. I won't. I have no reason to. Okay. Well, thank you for sharing it with me. After all, if I hadn't learned to embrace my own weirdness, I'd probably hate myself. I might be ranting a little bit now. But I'm glad that you're a good listener. You're good at a lot of things. Writing, listening... There really aren't many people like you, Finny. That's exaggerating a little bit. It's, it's just how I feel. I never thought I would feel so comfortable sharing my writing. But now I almost feel like I look forward to it. It's just a really nice feeling. And you're to thank for that. It's nothing, really. Yuri smiles sincerely at me. For just a moment, her timidness seems to disappear. Okay, everyone, we're all done reading each other's poems, right? I have something extra planned today, so if everyone could come and sit at the front of the room. Is this about the festival? Well, sort of. Ugh, oh, do we really have to do something for the festival? It's not like we could put together anything good in just a few days. We'll just end up embarrassing ourselves instead of getting any, any new members. That's a concern of mine as well. I don't really do well with last minute preparations. Don't worry so much. We're going to keep it simple, okay? We don't need much more than a few decorations. Thank you so much for the follow. So Yuri has been working on posters and I've designed some pamphlets that we can give out during the event. Okay, that's great and all, but that doesn't tell us what we're actually going to be doing for the event. Oh, sorry. I thought you heard about it already. We're going to be performing. Performing? Doki Doki Doo Doo. Hi, Smithy. Oh my god, my, my my wig is hurting my head. I just need to readjust. Hold on. Ow. Ow. Okay, that's better. Um. Oh, uh, Monica. Yeah, we're going to be having a poetry performance. Mwah. Each one of us are going to choose a poem to recite during the event. But the cool part is, we're also going to let anyone else come up and recite poems too. So you're always putting it all on the posters in case anyone wants to prepare ahead of time. So Yuri, who has been colouring a poster, holds it up for us to see. Are you kidding me, Monica? You didn't, you didn't always start putting these posters up, did you? Uh, well, I did. Do you really think that's a bad, I it's that bad of an idea? Well, no, it's not a bad idea. But I didn't sign up for this, you know. There is no way I'm going to be performing in front of a group of people like that. I I agree with Natsuki. I could never in my life do something like that. Imagining it, Yuri shakes her head in fear. Guys? No, Sayori. I understand where they're coming from. Remember that Natsuki and Yuri have never shared their poems with anyone until just a couple of days ago. It's a lot to ask them to recite the poems out loud to a whole room full of people. I guess I kind of overlooked that, so I'm sorry. But, I still think we should give it our best. We're the only ones responsible for the fate of this club. If we start the event and each put on a good performance, then it will inspire others to do the same. And the more people who perform, the better we'll be able to show everyone what literature is all about. Yeah! It's about expressing your feelings being intimate with yourself, finding new horizons, and having fun. That's right. And it's those reasons we're all in this club today. Don't you want to share that with others? To inspire them to find the same feelings that brought you in here in the first place? I know you do. I know we all do. And if that's what it takes is standing in front of a room, a room for two minutes and reciting a poem, then I know you could do it. Natsuki and Yuri remain silent. Sayori looks worried. I guess that leaves me no choice. I agree. I don't think it's too much to ask. 
I think there's Sayuri and Monica have been trying really hard to get new members. The least we could do is help them out a little bit. Well, maybe, but... It looks like Natsuki doesn't have any arguments left. Uh, Okay, fine. I guess I'll just have to get it over with. Alright! Phew! Thanks, Natsuki. What about you, Yuri? Yuri dejectedly glances around at everyone else's expected faces. <sighs> I, I guess I don't really have a choice. Ah, oh, that's everyone! You're the best, Yuri! This club is seriously going to be the death of me. Oh gosh, you'll be fine, Yuri. But anyway, let's move on to the main event. I want each of you to choose a poem of yours. We're going to practice recite them in front of each other. No, no way! Monica, this is too sudden. Well, if you can't recite your poem in front of the club, how do you expect to do it in front of strangers? Oh no, don't worry. I'll start off to help everyone feel a little bit more comfortable. Can I go next? Of course. Now let's see. Monica flips through her notebook to the specific poem she has in, in mind for herself. Then stands behind the podium. The title of this poem is The Way They Fly. Ahem. <clears throat> Monica begins reciting her poem. Her clear, confident voice fills the room. More than that, her inflection is pristine. She knows exactly how to apply emotion behind each line she recites, bringing the words to life. Is this something she's done before, or is she simply a natural? I glance around me. Everyone has their eyes on Monica. Sayori looks amazed. Yuri has an intense expression on her face that I don't understand. Finally, Monica finishes the recitation. The four of us applaud. Monica takes a breath and smiles. That, that was so good, Monica. Thank you very much. I was just hoping to set a good example. Are you ready to go next, Sayori? Uh, I'll go next. Oh, Yuri's fired up all of a sudden. Yuri clutches a sheet of paper between her hands and stands up. Keeping her head down, she walks quietly over to the podium. This poem is called... Yuri anxiously glances at each one of us. You could do it, Yuri. It's... It's called After Image of a Crimson Eye. Ooh, I hope we get to hear, that, hear it. Like... I want to hear it. Ah, I got dead leg. Ah, it's fine. I'm fine. Um, Yuri's voice shakes as she starts reading the poem. Just a moment ago, she practically refused to do this. Why is she suddenly putting in so much effort? As Yuri gets past the first couple of lines, her voice changes. It's almost like what happens when Yuri gets absorbed into her books. Her quivering, quivering words transform into the sharp syllables of a fierce and confident woman. The poem is so full of twists and turns in its structure that she enunciates with perfect timing. This must be a rare glimpse into the whirling fire Yuri keeps concealed inside her head. Suddenly, she's finished. Everyone is stunned. Yuri snaps back into reality and glances around her as if she's bewildered even herself. I... It's up to me to save the situation. I'm the first to start applauding. Everyone joins me afterwards and we give Yuri the recognition she deserves. It's not that we didn't want to applaud for her, but we were caught so off guard that we must have forgotten. As we applaud, Yuri holds the poem to her chest and rushes back into her seat. Yuri, that was really good. Thank you for sharing. Looks like Yuri is down for the count. Okay! <laughs> I don't know why I make her so hyper. I guess I'm next then. So Yuri hops out of her chair and cheerfully walks to the podium. This one's called My Meadow. Ah, uh, uh, sorry, I giggled. <laughs> so Yuri. It's a lot harder than I thought. How did you guys do it so easily? Ah. Try not to think of it like you're reciting to other people. Imagine you're reciting it to yourself, like in front of a mirror or in your own head. It's your poem, so it'll come out the best that way. I see, I see. Okay then. So Yuri begins her poem. Somehow it feels like her soft voice was made as a perfect match. The poem isn't aimlessly cheery, like Sayori said. It's serene and bittersweet. 
If I were to read this on paper, I probably wouldn't think much of it. But hearing it come from Sayori's voice almost gives it a whole new meaning. Maybe this is what Sayori meant when she said she likes my poems. It's like I get to reach more deeply than someone I thought I knew through and through. Sayori finishes and we applaud. I did it! Good job, Sayori. Even Billy liked it. I guess that's a good sign. What does that even mean? It came out nicely, Sayori. The atmosphere of the poem fits you really nicely. But it might be that other poems wouldn't work quite as well with that kind of delivery. Huh? I don't really understand. In other words, I've seen poems of yours that were, where that sort of gentle delivery wouldn't work as well. They might need a little more force behind them, depending on what you're reading. Oh, I know what you mean. That's, well, I've been practicing that kind of thing. It's just embarrassing to do in front of everyone. Ew, ew. It's been a while since you wooed. Then next time, I'm going to make you pick a poem that challenges you a little more. We don't have much more time before the festival, you know. Okay. Now, who's next? Natsuki? Hmm. Don't make me go before Finny. It's not like I can compare to you guys anyway. What? <laughs> Might as well let Finny lower everyone's standards a little before I have to do it. Natsuki? It's fine, it's fine. I might as well get it over with. It's not like I have much of a selection of what to read. I'll just have to go with what I wrote for today. I stand up. I step in front of the podium. Everyone has their eyes on me, making me feel terribly awkward. I recite my poem. Since I'm not exactly confident in my own writing, it's hard to put energy into it. Despite that, once I finish, I receive applause anyway. Ah, cute. Sorry, I'm not really as good as everyone else. Don't worry about it so much. I think it's less about your abilities and more about your lack of confidence in your writing. That's something you'll improve over time though. Yeah, maybe. All right then. That just leaves you, Natsuki. Yeah, yeah, I'm going. Natsuki begrudgingly gets out of her seat and makes her way to the podium. The poem is called, it's called, why are you all looking at me? Because you're presenting? Hmm. Anyway, the poem is called Jump. Natsuki takes a breath. Once she starts reciting the poem, her sour attitude disappears a little. While she's still a little unenthused, her poem has a rhythm and rhyme to it. It's Natsuki's trademark style and it works surprisingly well when spoken aloud. The words feel like they bounce up and down as if giving life to the poem. Natsuki finishes and everyone applauds. She huffs back to her seat. That wasn't so bad, was it? Easy for you to say. You better not make me do that again. Uh, well... Do you at least feel prepared not to recite the poem in front of other people? I mean, doing it in front of other people will be way easier. I can put on whatever face I want for other people. But when it's just my friends, it's just embarrassing. That's a surprise, Natsuki. I think we would be the other way around for me. Well, that's just how it is, so... Well, I guess in that case, you won't have much to worry about for the festival. That said, I want to thank everyone for coming through. It might be hard, but I hope that you all have an idea of what it's like now. Make sure you pick a poem and get enough practice for the festival, okay? I'll be making pamphlets, so let me know ahead of time what you'll be reciting. Jeez, I should probably find some other poems to recite instead. That's fine too. It doesn't have to be your own. I'm already pleasantly surprised you're putting in all this effort for the club. It makes me really happy. Uh, yeah, no problem. Okay, everyone. I think that's about it for today. I know the festival's coming, but let's try to write poems for tomorrow as well. It's been working out really nicely so far, so I'd like to continue that. As for the festival, we'll, be, uh, we'll finish planning tomorrow and then we'll have the weekend to prepare. Monday's a big day. I can't wait. I could do this. I can do this. All right. I stand up. There's no way I'll be able to find the same enthusiasm as Sayori and Monica, but I'll do my best to get through. If it's for the sake of the club and a person Monica, and then I'll have to do my best. Ready to go, Sayori? Yep. Look at you two, always going home together like that. It's kind of adorable, isn't it? Hee <laughs> hee. 
Jeez, you guys. Don't make such a big deal out of it. It must be a little nice, though. Well, uh, how am I supposed to respond to that? It's okay, Finny. You don't have to say it. Whatever. Let's go already. I walk home with Sayori once more. Even though it's only been a few days, a lot of things have already changed. But today, Sayori seems a little quieter than usual on the way home. Hey, Sayori. Sorry, I was spacing out. Ah, no wonder. Um, I was thinking about something from earlier. I like how we get to... I, I mean... Sayori fumbles with her words. Uh-oh. I think Sayori's going to tell me she likes me. So, let's just say that one day... Oh, Yuri... Maybe not. She's jelly, though. Yuri asked to walk home with you. Huh? What would you do? What kind of question is that? You're kind of putting me on the spot here. Well... Oh, okay, I would walk home with Yuri. I would still walk home with Sayori. Uh-oh. 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 I mean, let's be honest. We're not going to be able to hook up with Yuri if we don't walk home with her, are we? So, you know. I would walk home with Yuri. But not every time. I need like an option that says I would sometimes walk home with Yuri. Dommy Yuri would make you walk home with her. <laughs> Just the way I like it. <laughs> Loves be a good Dom. Seriously, Yuri, I don't know how anybody could ever choose anybody but Yuri in this. Like, the whole sweet and then she, you know she's nasty behind doors. You know it. Like, they, they're constantly hinting to her. Like, it is so the way to go. Okay, I would walk home with Yuri. Walking home with Yuri, huh? Why does the thought of that make my heart pound? I mean, given how hard it is for her to socialise, I would feel awful turning her down, so... Isn't she so beautiful and smart? That has nothing to do with what I just said. Hi, you admitted it! Jeez. There's not even any point in speculating something that's never going to happen. Well, maybe. Or both. Yeah, I mean, yes. Like I said before, that we have to save Yuri for last because you need to take your time with the Dom. Okay? Um, well, maybe. But I just like to think about it. It's not long before you won't need me anymore, you know? Need you? Sayori. I can't figure out how you're seeing things in your head right now. Sorry. Everyone is different. Nobody in the club is a replacement for you. Hmm, if you say so. The conversation trails off and I'm left feeling awkward. But it was kind of hurtful for trapping me with such a weird question. I can't just lie to her. But if there's something that makes her happy, I would hate to take that away from her. That's why I said there was no point in speculating. Then again, the festival is only a few days away. Who knows what will happen in that time? Okay. these words mean oops Never gonna get all her. Oh. 
Oh, darn it! <laughs> ah! Oh yeah, this, we've got to click climax, haven't we? <laughs> Literally got to be done. So yeah, auto mod. Okay. Oh man. I'm the last one here again. Don't worry, I just walked in too. Were well, you practicing piano again? Yeah. You must have a lot of determination. Starting this club and now picking up piano? Well, maybe not determination, but I guess passion. Remember that the club wouldn't be here if it wasn't for all of you. And I'm super happy that you're all willing to help out the festival too. Ah, I can't wait for the festival. It's gonna be great. Eh? Weren't you complaining about it just yesterday, Natsuki? Well, yeah. I'm not talking about our part of the festival. But it's the whole day of school where we go, get to go play and eat all kinds of delicious food. You sound a bit like Sayori all of a sudden. Monica, do they usually have fried squid? Ooh, I love a bit of fried squid. Mm -mm -mm. So I'll just check I don't miss anything in the chat. <laughs> Loves me some fire squid. Oh, hi, kids. Squid? That's a pretty specific thing to look forward to. Oh, come on! Are you saying you don't like squid? You? Of all people? Huh? I didn't say I didn't like it. Besides, what do you mean by you of all people? Because! It's right in your name. Mon Ika. Eh? That's not how you say my name at all. Also, that joke makes no sense in translation. Ah, never mind. Let's just focus on our own event for now, okay? Fine, fine. Your reactions aren't as funny as Yuri's or Sayori's anyway. Excuse me? Where is Sayori anyway? Ah, oh, there you are. Sayori is sitting at the desk in the corner of the room, looking down at nothing. I walk over to her. Hey, Sayori. I wave my hand in front of her face. Eh? You're spacing out again. Ah, uh, sorry. Don't mind me. You can go talk to everyone else. Huh? Is everything all right? Uh, of course. Why wouldn't it be? It just feels like you're a little off. Sorry for assuming things. Jeez, you worry too much about me. I'm fine, see? Sayori shows me a big smile. I'm thinking Sayori's not fine. Don't let me distract you from having fun with everyone. Well, alright, if you say so. I worriedly glance at Sayori before turning back to everyone else. But then the conversation has already dispersed, with everyone back at their usual activities. Maybe I should ask Monica if she's noticed anything about Sayori recently. Since they've been planning for the, preparing for the festival, they must be spending a lot of time together. I timidly approach Monica, who is shuffling through some papers at her desk. Vinny, what's up? Hey, this might sound a little strange, but have you noticed anything up with Sayori recently? Anything up with her? In what way do you mean? Maybe I'm reading into, reading into it a little too much, but she seems a bit downcast today. Oh, you think so? I can't say I've noticed anything about her. Monica peers across the room at Sayori, who is idly dragging a rubber eraser up and down her desk. Maybe there is something on her mind. She always talks to me about things that bothered her, but this time, when I asked her, she was really dismissive. Sorry, I know it's not your problem. I just wanted to ask if you knew anything, so I'll drop it now. No, no. It's important to me too. I mean, I'm also friends with her. And I also care about her well-being of my club members, you know. Maybe I'll try to talk to her myself. Uh, are you sure about that? She seemed like she wanted to be left alone. Are you sure? Maybe she just has a hard time bringing it up with a person of interest. Person of interest? What do you mean by that? 
I'm saying that maybe the thing on her mind is you, Finny. Me? How on earth would you come to that conclusion? Well, I probably shouldn't say too much, but... Sayori talks about you more than anything else, you know. Eh? She's been so much happier ever since you joined the club. It's like an extra light was turned on inside of her. What? No way. Sayori is always like that. She's always been full of sunshine. It's not any different now than it always has been. He, You're so funny, Finny. Have you thought about maybe you've always seen her as so cheerful? Because that's just how she is when she's around you? Um, oh, I said too much. I'm sorry. What do I know anyway? I didn't mean to jump to conclusions, so I could just... So you should just forget about what I said. I'll try to talk to her, so try not to think about it for now. Uh, alright. Monica smiles meaningfully. I know she said to forget about it, but I already know that I won't be able to get her words out of my head. Monica stands up from her desk and walks across the room to where Sayori is sitting. I watch her kneel down next to Sayori and gently talk to her. But, she ke but she's keeping her voice so quiet that I can't hear her from here. I sigh and sit myself down. I know Sayori told me not to worry about her and to have fun with everyone else, but that's impossible to do when she's behaving like this. Exactly how much do I care about her that I'm letting this weigh me down so much? Now it feels like I'm the one behaving out of the ordinary. But there's nothing I could do besides wait for Monica. Why does it feel like I'm being watched? I glance around the room. Suddenly, I notice Yuri peering at me over her book. But she looks away just as quickly with a flustered look on her face. I realise that she won't get anywhere like what? I realise that she won't get anywhere like this. I never really seen Yuri approach anyone or start a conversation on her, of her own accord. So I have no choice but to approach her myself. By now it's a little easier for me to do that. I stand up on my desk and sit in the one next to her own. I I didn't mean to bother you or anything. Relax, you didn't even do anything. But I could tell that you wanted to be alone with your thoughts. Alone with my thoughts? How were you even able to tell th what, that I was thinking that? Well, it's something that I do a lot. So it isn't hard for me to spot based on your posture and expression. Not that I was staring or anything. I didn't do anything creepy like that. In any case, I guess you were right. I'm sorry if I caused you any concern. Don't apologise. Your troubles are the only concern of those who willingly share in that concern. Of course, there are, cer there are certainly those who find the most comfort in keeping them to themselves. But if you would prefer to share what's on your mind, then I would be glad to listen. Uh, it's not really that big of a deal. I was just feeling a bit uneasy about Sayori. Sayori? Yeah, she seems a little off today. But when I asked her about it, she didn't want to admit it to me. So I can't help but wonder if something happened to her. Oh, that's quite romantic. Eh? Sorry, I didn't mean to say something stupid. It's not that, I just didn't want you to misunderstand. Sayori and I have just been, just been friends for a long time, that's all. Ah, I see. Then perhaps it is unusual for her to be dismissive to you about her feelings. Or maybe I'm just reading into it a little too much. Finny? The world is full of meaning, often hidden deep beneath plain sight. And there are many untold mysteries behind every person, no matter how well you may know them. Uh, do you think there might be something behind it after all? Hmm, I don't think Sayori is a ver I think that Sayori is a very complex person. Her mannerisms on the outside don't always match <coughs> what may be going on inside her head. Hello, how are you doing? Welcome in. She may not always know what she wants. I notice her strange behaviour today too. And I also feel some concern for her. But in your case, it looks like she's fully occupying your thoughts, wasn't she? Well, I guess that was the case. So Yori, she really means a lot to you, doesn't she? I guess. But you don't need to put it that way. We're just good friends, that's all. Yuri suddenly looks deep into my eyes. Oh, here we go again. Her expression is gentle and curious, as if she's searching for something. Embarrassed, I avert my gaze. Sometimes, 
A person's mysteries are untold either to themselves, and you, as someone honest and caring, may uncover feelings you weren't aware what just here to spend Sayori love. Ah you like Sayori, do you? Um may encourage uncover feelings you weren't aware were in you. I like Yuri <laughs> That is I think that she would be a very fortunate person to have you feel that way about her. Yuri, you're giving me too much credit. Damn it, another one. Oh no! <laughs> is she the common one then? The one that everyone picks? That's so funny. It's cause I sense the secret dom in her and she's all shy and cutesy. <laughs> No, well, yeah. <laughs> I don't mind being common. That's fine. <laughs> You're giving me too much credit. I'm a pretty simple guy. So I think I'm pretty good at understanding my own feelings. I'm not nearly as sophisticated as you. Uh, that's not a compliment, is it? It is what it is. Anyway, as long as we're here, why don't we do some reading? Well... I must eliminate all Yuri's. That's my job. <laughs> as long as you're okay with it. Yeah. I should be taking my mind off this whole thing. Anyway, thank you so much for the follow. Oh. Oh no, we don't get any saucy reading. Where's the, where's the reading snuggle? Man. Okay, everyone. After some time passes, Monica calls out to the club room. Why don't we share our poems now? Before I know it, everything is back to normal. Everyone goes to retrieve their poems and I do the same. I make eye contact with Monica as she smiles at me. I wonder what she was talking about with Sayori. Hmm. It's nice, I guess. Come on, I can already tell you don't like it. Well, you don't need to worry about what I think. After all, you wrote this for someone else, didn't you? Oh, so you'll be sad that we like Yuri. So I told you. Probably Yuri. Eh? I didn't write this for anyone specifically. Maybe. That's not really what I meant though. But it's okay. You're making new friends. Just like I was hoping. That makes me really happy. And you're happy too, right? In this club? Well, of course I am. Good. That's all that matters to me. Thank you, Finny. Sayori, is there something wrong? Huh? No, nothing. I'm just a little tired today. Alright. Just tell me if you need anything. I will. Don't worry about me, okay? You can go play with everyone else now. If you insist. Yay! I'm going to go home a little bit early today. Sayori, tell Monica I wasn't feeling well, okay? I'll see you tomorrow. Before I can say anything else, Sayori cheerfully walks out of the classroom, humming to herself. Hey, I didn't get to read her poem. This one's alright. Alright? Well, yeah. About as good as yesterday's anyway. I see what you're going for, but it's not really my style. I mean, that's fine. I'm mostly just glad you're trying a little bit. Well, of course I'm trying, at least trying. Why are you so emotionally invested in my poems anyway? Isn't that more of a compliment to me? Eh? No! Gross! It's not like I care. It's just that one of us in the club has to make sure you're not slacking off. Really? Well, if you ended up just scaring me what if you end up just scaring me away? That's, um, it's not like you would actually do that. Yeah, you're right. It's kind of fun to hang out in here, even if I have to put up with you. Ugh! Suki's elbow connects with my stomach. Oh, maybe I won't mind scaring you away after all. I was just joking. Oh, I know. Don't worry, I was too. Oh gosh, she's hyper. How the hell do you call that a joke? That seriously hurt. Well, maybe it was funny to her. I guess that's the point. I guess that's kind of the point. I should really watch my mouth around Natsuki. Anyway, Natsuki holds a poem to me like nothing even happened. I'll be your beach. Your mind is so full of troubles and fears that diminish your wonder over the years. But today I have a special place. 
a beach for us to go. A shore reaching beyond your sight, a sea that sparkles with brilliant light. The walls in your mind will melt away before the sunny glow. I'll be the beach that washes your worries away. I'll be the beach that you daydream about each day. I'll be the beach that makes your heart leap in a way you thought you had left that had left you long ago. Let's bury your heavy thoughts in a pile of sand. Bathe in sunbeams and hold my hand. Wash your insecurities in the salty sea and let me see you shine. Oh, I like this one. Let's leave your memories in a footprint trail. Set you free in my windy sail and remember your reasons are wonderful and when you press your lips to mine. I'll be the beach that washes your worries away. I'll be the beach that, your day, that you daydream about each day. I'll be the beach that makes your heart leap in a way that you thought had left you long ago. But if you let me by your side, your own beach, your own escape, you'll learn to love yourself again. Ah, I like that one. That was really cute. <clears throat> yeah. I felt like I kept writing about negative things, so I wanted to write about something that well, was a nice message for once. Besides, the beach is awesome. Kind of hard to write anything negative about the beach. So you decided to write about the beach first and came up with a message later? Yeah, well... It's only because of what happened yesterday. I mean, after Yuri and I realised we wrote about the same thing, she wanted to pick a topic and have us both write about it or whatever. Uh, you could really see her doing that too. Making us write about a simple topic then trying to impress me by coming up with something all fancy. Well, it's not like I care. I just did it anyway. I mean, I guess mine ended up in kind of metaphorical too. But there's nothing wrong with doing that once in a while. At the very least, it's good practice. <laughs> 